least start with the sleeping areas and maybe the areas immediately surrounding it. Uh, and then later on, you can move outward and inspect and, and do all that, that, that you can do. Uh, and so, you know, to get a pro uh, an infestation under control it takes a long time, it's a process, but uh, we, we focus on the sleeping areas, okay? So, we, uh, the first thing we do is uh, we provide encasements, uh, mattress covers, box spring covers, and a zipper. The encasements serve a number of purposes. One is um, any bed bugs that are, that are inside or any eggs that are on the surface um, won't be able to come out. Uh, and then if there are any uh, insects anywhere else on the, on the frame of the bed or on the edges of, of the walls, uh, when they come up to bite, they, they won't be able to use these hiding spaces that they like and they'll remain on top of the cover, so it makes it easier for you to continually inspect um, and to, to, you know, and to prevent them from, from having these hiding spaces where they can lay their eggs and, and be comfortable. It's really important to encase the box spring um, and that's because the bed bugs get into the wood of the, of the box spring and they lay their eggs um, all over the wood uh, in between pieces of wood. And so usually we'll find a few bugs uh, on the mattress, but then we'll really find a lot of them inside of the box spring. So it's really important to, to encase the box spring uh, first. Well, they have both as varying qualities. We what use cloth ones. Uh, yeah, the 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 store bought uh, vinyl covers tend to be low quality and uh, uh, they tend to become brittle and crack, uh, especially in the winter time with, with the air being dry and, and it being warm in apartments. So it's better to use cloth. Cloth covers. Yeah, and then there. The other thing you have to look at is um, the zipper. Um, there are higher end, more expensive uh, encasements that have zippers specially designed uh, so that the bed bug cannot escape. Uh, those are, you know, they're more expensive, but they're, they're, it's definitely worth getting that, especially compared to throwing out your bed and having to buy a new bed. So it's encasing the mattress and the box spring, and then it's inspecting the frame that, that that's on. Um, this frame here is a wood frame, uh, and you know bed bugs, as I just stated, they, they like the wood and they, they will get in between uh, where two pieces of wood meet. Um, so when we encounter this, uh, you know. You, the tenant has two options, the resident has two options. One is to dispose of it, and the other is to try to salvage it by uh, cleaning the, the frame and sealing with silicone all of these cracks and crevices. Metal frames are uh, a lot easier. Uh, the bed bugs won't lay their eggs on them. Um, they're not you know, the bed bugs like to lay their eggs on either on wall material, um, wood, or, you know, wood particle type of furniture, uh, fabrics. Um, and so we normally don't see them lay eggs on, on metal, although it is possible, um, but it's not a, a preferred area for them. So if you have a metal frame bed, you know, you're lucky. And uh, all you need to do is just wipe it and make sure that it isn't uh, too dusty. Um, make sure that it isn't rusted anywhere. Um, and then, you know, you can uh, just wipe it down and uh, put your encased box spring and mattress right on top. So once the whole bed is secure, then the next step is to isolate it from the wall. And why do you think we do that? Cracks. Wall. Yeah, they'll, they'll crawl up the wall, and if your pillow touches the wall, they'll easily get on the bed. Uh, if your sheets touch the floor, they'll easily get up on, on the, to the bed. Um, so it's important, if there's a space, to isolate it 
from the wall. And then we use a barrier for the legs. Um, we used to put tape on the on legs and apply Vaseline. Um, now we use something called a climb up interceptor. That's uh, I'll pass this around. It's a simple plastic um, device that has uh, masking tape around the sides, and it is um, is coated with uh, talcum powder. And so, separate this. The, the way this works is that the bed bug will um, will crawl up the side and fall into this ridge and not be able to get out. Um, so, just to summarize, we, you know, the, we do the encasements, check out the frame, isolate it from the wall, put the, the barriers on um, the legs. This will significantly reduce the problem where people sleep. You know, it's not foolproof, but it, it definitely makes it a lot harder for the insect to get onto the bed. This is just some of the the tools that, that are used, um, you know, silicone caulking, specifically, we actually rarely use this kind. We use a more expensive kind that uh, has, it's called a elast elastomeric. And what that means is that it'll expand and contract with temperature change, and it won't crack. So it lasts a lot longer. But we'll do all the cracks and crevices where the wall meets the floor. So uh, baseboards that are near a bed or a sleeping area, uh, around the frames of the door, uh, of windows, uh, all of those places where a bed book can, can get into. In this apartment that we were in, they have you know, baseboard heating just like this. And, uh, these sometimes travel from one apartment to the next. And so that all penetrations, all pipes that go in the walls, you have to look around uh, those penetrations to see if there are any signs. And the signs are the, the fecal spotting. So there we found all these black spots and figured it, it's a good idea to, to seal it off. A lot of these uh, managers will respond to the, whoever complains and just treat that apartment. But what happens is that the, the bed bugs will retreat into the wall cavities, they may move, then they'll return, and so it just makes sense to treat multiple apartments at once so that that doesn't happen, because otherwise they'll just be moving from place to place, going, getting deeper and deeper into the wall cavities, and uh, it'll be much harder to get rid of. Some people uh, want to use their own spray that they buy at a hardware store, and we try to get them, you know, if you're going to do anything, do these things that, that don't use pesticides, because the more you use a store-bought pesticide, uh, the, well, the, yeah, the, the only pesticide that people have access to that they can buy at a hardware store will only kill about half the population of bed bugs. Uh, because they're growing resistant to, to what we have available. Uh, and so people, what happens is people will use the spray over and over and then the bed bugs just get into uh, places that you wouldn't even imagine. You know, they'll get inside of a television or you know, inside of an appliance. Uh, I went into a, into a place recently where they were in a room that no one was sleeping in. But, you know, because they had put so much uh, pesticide down, they were just, you know, moving to wherever there wasn't any. And so that's why it's, you know, people should use these uh, non-toxic methods in their inner room while, you know, the board or whoever gets to act together and, and coordinates the service. You should check out the site um, because there, there are some forms for management companies for owners and uh, there are uh, pest management plan templates uh, that might be helpful. You know sometimes a building will have to submit it uh, if they get violated for uh, infestation that persists they'll have to get a pest control company to fill out an affidavit of correction of pest infestation so there are new things that uh, people have to comply with and so it's a good idea to look at the, at, the, at the site. A bed bug infestation is 
requires a level of cooperation amongst tenants that, uh, you know, I think it's uh, unprecedented. Um, but it's something that people really have to learn about.